Rick. Special agenda design review board, August 15th, will be called to order at 4 p.m. at 915 S. Torville Road, City Meeting Room. Uh, meeting, uh, roll call. Peter Gaffer is excused. Stephen Green is yep. Todd Duncan. Here. Michael McCartman's on his way. Frank Davis here. John Sky. Present. Ben, you know, <laughs> listen, but you're here, so here. Okay, very good. Start calling you vacant. <laughs> um, okay, call of the public. If, um, anyone, is there anybody signed up for call of the public? Yeah, it's yeah. right there. Thank you, Ben. Richard. Okay. Yeah, Richard Robinson. Okay. Call the public. Oh, you want to just before you get to the well, you no, tell the public it's the thing that aren't on the agenda. Oh no, then that's fine. I'm not going to that my So you want to speak to one of the items? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Then we'll uh, move to agenda item number one for discussion possible action. Item uh, application 945-45, this be residential historic district. Unencumbered, not contributing property. This application seeks to approval to build a new home. Uh, okay, go yeah, I'll uh, recuse myself from this and present. <coughs> Thank you, Ben. Hi. Um, so uh, this application is for a uh, new home above Mimosa Market on uh, Brewery Gulch. Uh, just up the stairs, there's a vacant lot that you might be familiar with where there's a parking and a ski tree. So right up the hill from that, uh, underneath what used to be a greenhouse that was vacant, um, is a little plot of land that my client, Dan Tosh, uh, is wants to build a, uh, a small house on. Uh, two bedroom, uh, one bath. Um, and we designed the house to be a uh, board and batten. Uh, wood construction, um, very much uh, inspired by the surrounding miners' cabin. So it's uh, kind of an elongated plan uh, and matches up exactly with the concrete ruin that's on the site. So there's, there's an old, uh, either it's a prison cell or, or dynamite shelter or something that's on the site. So we're lining it up with that and kind of use, incorporating that as part of the um, porch. And um, across the valley is Bill Higgins' house, which is a, another miner shack that we took um, inspiration from and kind of copied the design and changed the roof plan a little bit. Um, so that's what you see here. Um, and it is, uh, we even looked at the setbacks, which isn't always the case in Old Bisbee, but we're within the setbacks. And, uh, and we're kind of coming in right off the sidewalk. And, um, so in the plan is a site plan, a floor plan, and uh, four elevations. So, um, and the uh, window types are actually drawn on the elevation. That's, that's what we're uh, hoping to do. Um, hopefully they'll look like that. Um, the roof is going to be corrugated metal. And the siding is going to be um, hardy board with uh, battens, redwood battens. So uh, the appearance will be board batten, but with a longer lasting life. Um, and the battens will be uh, irregularly placed. So not 16 inch on center, 12 on center, or 10 on center, but kind of more random um, as drawn here um, in the elevations. Um, that's it. Questions? Uh, did you guys put together a materials list? You might okay. just not see it. Do you well, it's even? notated. There's not a list, but it's notated on the drawings what the materials are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just need a magnifying glass to see it. Dan, you're not kind to of the elderly, elderly here. No, sorry. Yeah, support so board back is. Um, Listed uh, page A3 and the details. 
salvation. And there's uh, overall dimensions as well. <coughs> There's an um, optional fireplace drawn on the drawing. Mm -hmm. um, this is in quite close proximity to other wooden structures mm -hmm. to the, what would be the east, I think. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of uh, control of things like embers coming out of that chimney would there be? Well, for code, you're supposed to have a uh, screen on the top of the, chimber, uh, on top of the chimney that uh, controls that, and there's specifications for the closeness of the screen, which control on so. yeah, there's, a, there's a code required spark arrestor. I want to okay. add that, that I'm not completely sold on having the burn stove in here, because they, you know, you can get, you know, you can get fireplaces that burn on liquid fuel, which you don't necessarily have to use wood. So more than likely, I would go that route. Okay. That's my only concern. Well, I'd say that the building looks well in keeping with the, uh, the area. <coughs> um, it's well designed. I like the I like the board and batten look. That's uh, one of my favorites. I actually own a house directly on the side of it that does not look as nice as this one, but um, I definitely think the design is um, uh, a good fit for that neighborhood. Uh, that whole neighborhood is in disrepair except for Sean in the back back there he's done an amazing job remodeling his home don't mean to put you on the spot Sean <laughs> but um uh, I think uh, I think that um yeah, that structure definitely is uh, will fit in well with uh, with that uh, area thanks are there any comments from the uh, <coughs> tenants about the about the structure. John, did you have anything to say? Yeah, I just want to ask uh, about the windows. Mm -hmm. Windows and doors. I yeah. don't see any heads thrown on the elevation. So what you see is a typical Bisbee window where you've got centered lantern mm -hmm. and then uh, sash windows. So essentially there's four panes per window, two top, two bottom. All right. And, and that uh, the front door, we've got a, a wood bottom and glass top. And uh, I oh. on that nine pain. Double hung wood sash. Do you, do you know where you're getting them already? Or? No, we had, uh, Dan has one supplier, but yeah, we haven't gotten that far. Okay. And then it looks like it's not a nine light, is it? For the I, think it, I think that is what I drew. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you got a. Oh, no, it's 12. Okay. Good deal. As we got some of those connectors, it's got the way it is. So it's just two lines or So the east elevation is, <coughs> is looking from that stairwell that you walk up. Pardon me? That east elevation is looking from the stairwell you walk up. Okay. So the um, that that's basically the front of the house as you're approaching it. But from the street, the front of the house would be like the south elevation. The pickets on the on the fence, are they gonna be two by two? Two by two pickets. What are you guys doing for the pickets? Um, I was thinking like one by fours with that with that little design. Oh, nice. Or something. Yeah, that would be really nice. It'll be more visual from the street. Though. Yeah, because uh -huh. it's pretty high up there. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a nice little design there. And was there is that a pre-existing lot? Do you know? Have you found any like sewer lines or? I know that there's yeah, that little there's building up there. Yeah, there's utilities <coughs> along the sidewalk. So. It looked like the WPA or somebody built that sidewalk mm -hmm. and along next to it, I think to the right, so on the east side of the, is the sewer and the water and the gas. Mm -hmm. And then they like dirt filled over it. And then also the, the electric line is over that too. So that whole area is like the utility easement. Do you, you have the sewer so, tap? <clears throat> um, actually. There's a, there's a sewer tap down to the lower one. Yeah, in the lower lot, which is actually technically the same lot. Yes, same lot. Yeah. 
we haven't gotten to construction docs yet, so. So, I guess well, that, I'm good. Uh, does anyone else want to speak on this? Anybody from the public want to speak about this? Yes. Come on up, sir. I'll leave the drama series. Thank you, Ben. Now, I'm Richard Robinson. I live at uh, 239, not 239A. I think the 239A is a brand new thing. There never was anything out there, but I've never heard of it. Anyway, I'm sure the, uh, <clears throat> the board is aware that there is no access to this. And there's no stairway, there's no trail. The only thing that's there is the remains of the first attempt to build a road which was built on my property without any permission. And it was meant for ATVs. And I have a great full color picture of ATVs right outside my back door. So that is still there. And I'm wondering, does the board have any premonition of what it's going to look like? I have a question. Has the lot been surveyed? Yes, it has. It has been surveyed. Yep, the upper lot has been surveyed. Ben, and you have those, uh, you have those markings up there? Uh, yeah, and um, they are up there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been surveyed and stamped by our local FISB surveyor. So, um, and also there is a pathway indicated on the site plan directly to the east of the site, so there is access. Joel, have you been up there? I have. Does Mr. Tausch have access from the stairs? Yes, he does. They're, they're just uh, opening. There would just need to be an opening in the rail, which the city would. So he, so he's not down. landlocked. He has access to yeah. his property. And we don't. And the city doesn't require access to the because we've got so many lots that have no access <laughs> for for vehicles and that kind of thing. But um, that's also, not a, that's not a requirement. Also, it should be noted that Dan owns a lot directly underneath, which does have access, so he can go on to his own lot and. Serve so it's his. one big lot. You have a lower lot and an upper lot. I see, and it's all. Uh, it's one, one parcel. parcel. One parcel. Yeah. And what what kind of help? What kind of setbacks do you guys have for the house, for the property line, etc.? If I could ask you that. There's the elevation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, we actually called um, zoning and asked, and they said usually in Old Bisbee, you follow what the neighbors are doing. However we asked what the setbacks are anyways. So uh, 20 foot rear setback, five foot side setbacks, and 15 foot front setbacks. It should be noted that it's not really possible to define the front of the lot since on one side you have the street and on the other side you have the stairs. So we, we picked the street as the front setback and um, as seen in the site plan, we're within all of the setbacks anyways, even though we don't need to. This, okay. stru this structure is not encroaching on any of uh, the setbacks? No, and these were drawn from the surveyor's plans. And it's got it, okay. Which, which are um, less than a year old, right? Yes. <clears throat> and my question would be, is there going to be vehicle access? No, that there will be no vehicle access on the no, upper, no, on the no. upper lot. Um, no, you know, even coming from the lower lot, it's just going to be pedestrian. But there, but there will be parking on the lower lot. There's going to be parking on the lower. Lot. But, but there will be no cars up on the upper lot. No. Or any type of vehicle. No. No ATVs this time. Yeah. No. Does that answer your question, sir? Yeah, that answers my question. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it would seem because the board would want to know what access is going to be we usually we usually that. trust our our uh, local building uh, official right John, uh, uh, actually i'd like to remind the board that we are just concerned with what this building looks like on the exterior we do not deal right. with, with the proximity of other setbacks and things like that oftentimes it's brought up but that's not in our purview we just are concerned with design and building that's uh planning and zoning that's that she deals with infrastructure and stuff like that. We just want to make sure that the town continues to have a historic feel. So, now, okay, that, that answers my question. Okay. Very good, thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Sorry sir, we're getting off topic there. I have one. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Uh, to the microphone. Uh, it's just that the number on that. Hold on. Okay. Talk into the microphone, please. 
the number of that building is 239, and we have property further down, and it's 237. So it seems to kind of be uh, confusing, that's all. Mm -hmm. Again, I think, wouldn't that be planning and zoning? Or? Actually, that falls in my purview. Yep, sure, perfect. So you can take that up with uh, Mr. Ward, I guess. Yeah. I'm Sean DeCramer. I live at uh, 221 Brewery, um, directly below uh, Dan's property. And I just wanted to say I'm definitely in favor of this. Um, I think Todd hit the nail on the head when he said the neighborhood is pretty much in disrepair. Um, this is going to be a walk in relief to just not only my investment, but other people's investments, um, the investments you guys are making in the neighborhood. So yes, sir. I just want to give it a vote of confidence and let you guys know that I'm in full support. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you for speaking. Anybody else like to speak to this issue? This item? Can we make a motion? Please, please. Make a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to pass uh, DRV application 19-45 as is. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, you have to. Um, Who seconded? I second it. Okay. 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 Next time, give us something. Come on, right here. The chair is <laughs> No, not that. The writing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you can <laughs> hand out magnifying was, glasses. I was being cheap with the 11 by 17. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll move on to agenda item number two. Discussion possible actions, application 19-42, Bisbee Residential Historic District, contributing structure number 257 is the existing home location. Applicant Mark and Susan Mays, this application is for permission to demolish an existing shed and build a remodel in the location of the rear of the property at 426 Garden. Uh, I'm going to re recuse myself on this one. Uh, go ahead. So there's a um, shed back behind the house on Garden Avenue. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it or not. Um, it's been there forever. Kind of looks like crap. Um, there's other ones like that on the property. We want to take that down um, so that way we can pour a new slab there and build a like a gazebo type of structure there. Um, that way he has more area, you know, to entertain. Uh, it's a big property, but there really is no entertaining space there and no place to enjoy the outdoors. Um, so we want to get permission to take this down. When we rebuild it, it'll be, um, the only thing we're gonna change is the roof is gonna pitch in the opposite direction to get it off the back. Um, and, that's basically what we're looking at doing. There's pictures here, kind of what he wants to do. We'll have a uh, corrugated roof, all um, steel. I don't know if there's a steel or steel frame. Steel frame. Steel frame. Um, and then there's, uh, there's, I think, five more sheds right next to it. So I don't think anyone's going to be missing out on sheds. How many sheds is there? There are two more sheds. Oh, two, two more two sheds. more sheds in the back, and then two brand more new sheds. Brand new garage that was built by Noah, um, like three or four years ago. Okay. Um, so, and then when we rebuild this, it's going to basically be exactly where it's at. It's it is on the, the property line there, as you see in the site plan. Um, but we're going to keep it just a little bit further away, so it's going to be like for like except for the walls and the roof will be pitched. Right. And the neighbors, I guess, are good with it going away and being rebuilt new on the same lines. Or yeah, I remodeled the house right next door to um, a couple years back, and you know those people were they were very nice at the time, and I'm sure that they, you know, they're not here. So, right. Yeah, question is back. Go ahead. Yeah, I have one question. Um, so the side facing the neighbor is the eight foot side? Yes, the lower side. Correct. And that's open or? Open. 
Right now, there's a concrete wall behind it that's about um, about four feet. Yeah, about four feet tall. And I, I'd like to leave it there. It just looks old and rustic, and it's it's not in bad shape. So it'll be you know that. And then like underneath that, that's where like I put my grill and stuff back up against. But all, all four sides are open. Oh, open. Oh, yeah. So really, it's like you can imagine the shed. So the roof is the other way without the walls. Yeah, like basically turning the shed into a disease. So the shed's just not structurally sound enough because it's been, you know, it's all and it's been burned. And so I want to do something with uh, metal because our other sheds have that brown paint that looks like rusted metal. So I thought that either the, either paint it brown or let it rust brown to tie in with the uh, existing sheds that are in the back. And then the, the corrugated metal will probably also be that same product if uh, it's not galvanized and it will also rust in time. Other questions or comments from the board? Uh, I'm going to entertain a motion. Uh, a motion to uh, accept uh, 1942 uh, changes. I second that motion. All right. All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Motion's passed. Thank you. What else we got on the agenda? Well, that's the uh, only applicants we have on the agenda. We do have uh, for item number three discussion and review of administrative approval. And uh, also, I want to add a couple things for our next meeting when we get there. Um, Michael, do you want to lead off on that discussion review of administrative approval? Yeah, sure. Uh, so just as a reminder for, I guess, commission members, uh, 600 Tombstone was an application that came before us some time ago. Uh, we had approved the building being remodeled modestly. Windows changed, a mix, I think, of wood windows along with some uh, vinyl windows as well. 600 Tombstone. The corner right of Warren Hill and Tombstone. Right by the Small corner Jay building. Jay Golden's old house. Gotcha. <laughs> For those who've been here a while. <laughs> Long time. Um, so that came before us. They had proposed, I think Mr. Raby represented the owners, had proposed that uh, the building be, with its remodeling be resided with the original wood siding that's on the structure. And just as a reminder, this is a contributing structure. That's what it's rated. Uh, who should go on record with them? So the work's gone in a sort of stop and start basis. So it's been a long time since we've seen this building as an application. Uh, but more recently, uh, the I guess either the applicant or the contractor came back and requested an administrative review for changing how the siding would be done. So what was going, what was originally the original wood siding with the profile, and it's a fairly thick siding, I would say, uh, relative to the age of the building, um, was changed to uh, request to get to reside the front which faces tombstone and the back which faces the back of the lot that's not particularly visible with Hardy board um, I had inquired when mr. Ward had indicated he had made that approval if that really was consistent with DRB guidelines he said he thought it was I didn't think it was I don't know if any other commission members may have asked him or inquired about it um, but I did follow up with uh, Shippo, with Eric Bondi, and he made it pretty clear that the building would no longer have contributing status with that siding going up on it. So for me, this is a real concern because this means a building that is contributing will no longer be contributing. And I'm really not comfortable with the way administrative approval was used because this is something that came before us as the full board originally based on trying to maintain some integrity to the building in terms of its materials, uh, and then it feels like a back door was used to get another type of material to be used in the building with, with us finding that after the fact. And again, I'm just not happy that now we're seeing a building that's How much of the siding's up? Um, well, when I initially contacted Mr. Ward, none of the siding was up. Now, maybe a third of it's up foot on the front, front of the building. Foot, foot from today, the front doesn't have siding, but you can see that it's pair of the old siding to the sides. So, so if uh, concrete siding is used on a contributing structure, it will be deemed a contributing. Well, I, think, I think the issue is that this, Even is, if it this is totally different than the siding that's on the 
size of the building that was on the building originally. It's a collaborative party board, and he's got some kind of a dropped uh, pie for the design on the sides. And I think that's what we as a board thought originally he was going to reuse that side. So, yeah. So, I, you know, I have a question about this. I think that, that should have been brought before us rather than have administrative approval uh, because the signs, that's a different thing, but that's, that's well, it's a totally different thing now. Distracting to yeah. and now and now we're uh, finding that it won't it'll be taken off the contributing. So, yeah. So. See, when I drove by it, you know, I knew that the situation was going on, and I just drove by it. I didn't get out to look at it. I, you know, I probably should have, but I thought it it had looked pretty much the same. So I was like, well, you know, whatever. It's a different product. As soon as it all gets painted, it should look the same. But you're saying that the profile. Of the pre-existing, yeah. is when you actually come up to it and yeah. look at it. Yeah, different. it looks odd. You know, that you've got that one wood siding with a different profile, and you have. And you can see it on you can see it on Street View, John. Huh? You know, Google Maps Street View. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, well, you can, now I'm going to stop by there on my way by and, see and look at it. But you closely. can't see the you can't see what was on there before. If you, you drive can, by, but well, Street View, you can see what was on there. Isn't the same on. material that's on the side of the building? Wasn't that on the front of the building as well? The siding that was on the, that's on the side. You really can't see on Street View. I said I was talking to Dr. Path. These South bushes. There's but to the answer edges to your question, the right, there's too much bushes yes, on the street. Yes, you can see the original siding exactly. on the side of the building, and some of some repair work was done on the side when different windows were put in, and they had used some of the existing siding that they had taken over the front and back and pieced so, it in and pieced it in on the side. So you can because it that. hasn't been painted yet, you can see the repair work that was done with you know some attention to detail where they re reused the existing side as they told us they would uh -huh. put it up on the side of the building where they've done some repair work because of changing at windows so you know what we'll have is kind of like a Frankenstein monster of a building on its two sides with original siding whether it was reapplied or was left there and then the front and the back with the front highly visible the tombstone and Warren Hill with hardy board siding and the, the the original siding was it like a, a one by eight lap siding or it's something like that, but it has a design. To it. Yeah. Ship I'm, ship lap, but it's, it looks like some kind of a ship lap, maybe a tiny groove. They, they I mean, yeah. It has a cove in it. Yeah. I mean, it could be reproduced. Uh, it take a little bit of work, but yeah. there's not a lot of of uh, siding so on the front could, of that building. No, you could get, you could get ship lap. Right. And then, yeah, right. through a router. Right. Yeah, you can reproduce that pretty, pretty close. Um, so I think it brings up the question of what, again, what's going to be administratively approved and what isn't. Uh, this type of thing I wouldn't think would have been administratively approved. Can you give us some thoughts on that, Joe? Yeah. The, did you do you have a copy of the administrative approval? I don't. Oh. But um. I think, if I remember correctly, that it, the administrative approval was for like for like. Was what? Like for like. Like for like. I, I don't. I can't give administrative approvals for anything that's not like for like. Well then. So, that, but that was, I believe, what was on the approval, and that's why it was like, well, why, why? Am, it, it was going on to an agenda, if I remember right, the second one, and it's like, well, it says like for like, so, so I went ahead and did it, but. But it isn't like for like. It's a different siding. Yes, but you had a problem with the approval, Frank. And what I'm talking about is that the approval was like for like. That's what I said. Yeah. So he approved so, like for like, but and it sounds like he just went and did something. So oh. Johnny Ramey did something different. So you didn't approve. Yeah. And, and I, did, so, I didn't approve so him to change anything. Him, yeah. if, if it said like yeah. for like, that's, it, that's when you get an administrator. You didn't approve the cement, the cement hardy backer siding. You approved like for like. If it was, yeah. well, if it had if it been lap siding and you're replacing lap siding with with Hardy Backer, right. we've always we've always called that like for like. And I got to you know, I, I got to be. Uh, so I saying, like the uh, the being able to do some administrative no, approval situations is a good thing, but you well, know, not I, if we're removing contributing structures from the historic. But I agree. And what I'm understanding is that you did not approve what Johnny Raby has done there with that site. You said like for like, and that is not like. That's for that's like. the way I remember, that, Frank. And that is I don't not, have it in front of me. And okay, it's that's not right. here. That, that is not like for like. So it's not like for like. I so, are you going to put a stop work on? That's on what I'll have to do. Yeah. 
And then uh, would we have would we have to uh, revisit that application and come in front of us? Well, no, he's going to have to do what he said he was going to do and do it like for like. Right. Okay. Yeah. But why don't we, why don't, while we're talking about this, it's, it's a broad subject, why don't we deal with that, with the issue of what you guys are going to want like, what you guys are calling like for like, because I thought I was being, you know, that somebody was saying, oh, it should, he's putting on cement siding instead of putting on wood siding. And um, there's, right. that's always been something that's done on a like for like basis. Sure. So um, if I that's going to be an issue, I want you guys to tell me that. Certainly, and I think that brings up another thing. We're about to go, to go into... Uh, at the next meeting, we want to discuss putting the community together for the review of design review guidelines. And that's that's something that we will definitely want to be looking at. I, I mean, in my mind, if a siding is similar to what is on there, then that, that's okay. That may be different with other members of the board. Uh, but we do need to define that. You're right, Jim. I, I, uh, I would first look at what the current SHPO rules are and what would constitute a loss right of status it might be the case that we were not we not shouldn't have been allowed to replace wood with hardy board even if when you look at it after it's painted it looks exactly the same the fact that it's hardy board versus that might be against ship of rules we i don't to, know we need to look, yeah we need to look well at i think the main thing would be is that we're not losing if if you're going to do an administrative approval and you're going to lose a contributing structure obviously that's something that we wouldn't appreciate so that would be a no right that I, I mean think, i think we had to get mr bonnie back and he loves to come and i think uh, yeah i spoke with mr bonnie about this, this and, well, he, I know you and he also indicated that he'd be glad to come and present to us in october if our agenda permits he knows the day and time so if that can be reserved right. for our october meeting but I think my, my other concern, Mr. Ward, is that I know I brought this to your attention immediately because I live just up the block from the building. Mm -hmm. And you simply said, oh, it's like for like. That's why I approved it. End of story. And to me, that was not a complete response. I indicated what my concern was. I indicated that the siding was clearly different. And that's why I then followed up with Mr. Von because I thought, OK, maybe I don't understand the shipbuilt mm -hmm. guidelines. But it's clear I did. And it's clear that his guidance was, you do that, the building's not a contributing structure. So I would have appreciated some other kind of follow-up, either from you or someone else within the city administration, to either confirm with SHPO what those standards are. Mm -hmm. um, because to me, this situation could have been avoided from what is now being discussed as a stop work potential situation. And given the particular contractor who you've brought concerns to us before about, and me in particular, it only underscored to me the reason to actually follow up on this and address it with the contractor and or the owners of the building. So I feel like we lost an opportunity because notice was given to you after that like for like, even if that was done in a deceptive manner by the applicant or their contractor, or like for like was misunderstood. There's an opportunity to resolve this before a piece of party board everyone on the building, and we lost that opportunity. Yeah. I have a right to be able to take a vacation sometime, Mike. And oh. so, so I was, I, that came about two days before I left, and I was wall to wall with stuff. I worked on, you know when you guys got your stuff. Yes. I sent that stuff out on midnight, and I had a plane to catch you the next morning. And I came back and I worked for another hour and a half, or two hour, two and a half hours in the morning. Now that's not your fault, and that's not your problem, but I'm saying that I was back to the wall with stuff to take care of, and um, that, got, that got neglected, but it wasn't because I didn't care enough. But I just don't have enough time to do everything that needs to be done sometimes, Mike. Right. Sorry. And, and I, I, I hear you. I worked in public service for 20 years. I'm familiar with having to work long hours without regard from uh, the customers I'm serving. Then I would certainly hope that you'll continue to bring that to your supervisor or others because I think we need to pursue this in a more organizational way as well. Because what I'm hearing is you're overwhelmed with demand. You're not able to respond in a timely way to situations that at times will require a timely response. But for our role as volunteer residents in the community, we're left with, well, that's not a solution to situations like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a member of this commission and as a resident of this community, I want to see us pursue something that's a systemic resolution to this, whether that's changing the administrative approval process, uh, whether it's pressing the mayor or council or uh, administrators that Mr. Ward you know, reports to to get the appropriate support there because I don't see how this situation wouldn't occur again given 
the dynamics of your, your, your workload. I, I, I do wonder uh, what, um, it, it takes time, like, so I imagine Joe Ward does laps around the city, right? So each lap takes, I don't know, a week or a few days, right? When, from when you're in one neighborhood, you go to the next, right? And that'll change by neighborhood, by season, by economy, right? So in that time period from, okay, he was here this week, he's going to come around again, contractor can do a lot of work uh, that conflicts with the contractor's own permissions that were given. In this case, like the like was not, the contractor was the one breaking the rules. So um, it just, I guess it depends on like what, how long it takes uh, for the project to be checked up on. Right, is, is maybe the issue, I don't think the issue is the administrative review, I think it's the follow-up with the deceptive contractor and how that gets um, a stop order or a fine or a, you know, remove that and do that before you get a stop order sort of thing, depending on the, what their track record is. Um, that's how I see it. I'm not debating I agree with you totally, and that's just how I see how long it takes for him to even catch the issue. Um, and then it comes down to what happens. Maybe a stop order isn't needed if he agrees to take off the siding mm -hmm. and actually do the ship lap like he said he would. Well, right. And that would be the goal. And I think in this case, you might have seen it before Joe had a chance, because you live right next to it, before Joe had a chance to um, say himself, you know, uh, but the stop work order is a way to make this particular contract contractor accountable. Yeah. At so, this point. so so there so there is a way to uh, uh, rewind what's happened, and I'm sure Joel that's within his scope, and he's going to follow up on that. So uh, I'm, I'm not questioning. There's a remedy at this point. It's obviously not the most time efficient remedy. Uh, I don't have great feeling for the contractor that engaged in this practice based on concerns that have come up before this commission previously, specifically about this contractor, uh, and that you, Mr. Ward, have raised as well that has prompted us to make changes in some of the existing design review board guidelines that we operate from. So I hear all that. Uh, I still at the end of the day go, okay, so if the workload of one employee with the city of Bisbee uh, is that impacted, and certainly given the amount of the volume of remodeling and new building activity we see going on throughout just old Bisbee, uh, forget the other parts of Bisbee that Mr. Ward is responsible for, then that situation is just going to occur again and again unless there's a different uh, solution that the city of Bisbee, the council, and or with we can come up with. I know at one point there was an attempt to tap into Cochise County's code enforcement arm as one way to try to lessen some of the workload. Uh, at this point, my understanding is that has that relationship been severed entirely? Do we know? Yeah, I'll not entirely, but not entirely, Michael. But they um, they right off the bat when we started, they they said, "Oh, we're no, we don't want to do that." The code enforcement, and go look around Cochise County and see if you really want them to do your code enforcement. <laughs> I well, I would just well, say I, would just, I, I hear your concern. I would just say that the start, you know, this building is kind of like that old Zen phrase: bad at the beginning, bad at the middle, bad at the end. At the beginning of this building, an asbestos roof was uh, removal was begun by the contractor. We did not have the licensing to remove asbestos from a building. Uh, the county code enforcement department was called, and I believe within an hour or two, they were there. They stopped the work and they required a licensed uh, contractor who was licensed to remove asbestos to remove the asbestos. So at least in that one particular instance, they were prompt. I know the politics of this has changed now that the city of Bisbee is not generating revenue for Cochise County by renting out expensive office space. So maybe the county's less inspired to want to be responsive than they once were. But I think the city of Bisbee, as well as we as community representatives, are going to have to be creative in coming up with some other solution. I know. I know it's hard. To, it's it's hard to because you got code enforcement, and you and you've got um, building inspecting together. But what they did, those are building inspectors that came out there, and that was a building inspector, not code enforcement. Code enforcement is 
has to do with your cutting your gra your grass in a timely manner and most of those kind of things. I think that this issue has been ongoing. I know it's been ongoing for you know years. You know, back when Bob Meskett was was the, you know the code officer, and you know this finding. I think if perhaps we as a board can write a letter to the council and you know tell them that, you know we see that Mr. Ward needs some help. You know, I, I don't know if we can push any way, that's all we can do. Because they're going to say, we've only got so much money, and Joe's going to have to do with what they have. So, but uh, didn't he say that he took a vacation, and that's what, I mean, it was a week out of, what, how many vacations a year do you take? Well, I, had two, I, had, I had 220 hours built up. That's how yeah. many vacations I get. But I'm saying, what are we, we're going to ask that they put some fill-ins for when he goes on vacation? Is that what no, you're talking about? Because I know Joel has great work at it. He just shows up like... Yeah. No, we're talking about something that needs to be more systemic, either if it's additional staffing to support Mr. Ward to be able to respond to these issues that are timely so that they can get a timely response. My concern is because the issues have been going on for years, it's been batted around. I know to your frustration, to frustration of the members of this commission, to some community members' frustration as well. So what I don't want to see after three and a half years of serving on this, where this has come up before, we reach an impasse and it's basically past the buck time, that we just quietly wilt away as other buildings continue to fall away as contributing structures in you the historic district. May I ask you what you would like to see? Uh, I think a, a more robust discussion certainly needs to happen. I just wanted to raise this to get the discussion started, but I think we're gonna to need to engage different people within the city of Bisbee to have the discussion. I think having Eric Vondi come to present to us in October. Is there anyone is else that has some ideas on what they'd like to see? I don't think this is a quick fix. Yeah. yeah. But well, I think, I think well, I don't know, maybe someone else has it's some a, ideas. Much of it is a budgetary issue. Frank, Frank had, had the best idea, or I'd like to say the best idea, like let's take it to council and I think that's where we could start. I there's think there's a lot of people who feel so feel so, have a lot of um, emotion for our district, and that's rightly so. But wait, but well, that, there's also there's take? also a lot of volunteer forms that are available for um, that we have a lot of people in the community who have a tremendous amount of love for the for the district. If they if they'd like to take on a little bit of that enforcement, and I'm not talking to you, Michael. I'm, you're you're a volunteer here. Don't mistake what I'm saying at all. No, I don't. But. The um, you know, we have we do have people out here that that want to help the district. I know. Well, I that think that a little bit of volunteer w could go a long way. That's part of the discussion that we need to have. What what type of slots volunteers could assist you with, mm -hmm. and assist this board with, and, and doing these things. Um, so I think at this point, let's uh, could move move on to the. What were we going to say? Well, I mean, we if, if we're going, going to get it to council with somebody, would, should we make a motion or, or, or something to, for somebody to write a letter? Or to I'm, I'm confused to about what better. exactly we well, would be bringing a, to council. Because like, the well, process, John. We're, process. Not, we're not nailing anything it's down. Process. What, that we're going to get Joel a helper? Is that well? Like, that we'll, change, we'll change process. Yeah, we'd like to so see what some, some assistance. We did talk about um, before about fees now Joe has a permission to hand out fees for contractors that don't follow through with what they promise and I don't know if that's been if you've actually handed out any fees yet but that could straighten some fees or fines fines Sorry. Sorry. didn't that get killed by the city manager when you brought it up we did yeah we, we went that. out there and talked with the judge and the judge yeah. the judge felt like um, that the well, in one way, it, it's ambiguous because we have two different sets of wording that are within the zoning code, which would is the, is the code that is um, over this, the, the DRB rules. And so, because we've got two different sets of rules, that he didn't think that it was that was going to be, it could um, be enforceable. Enforceable. Right. Well, they did it. That so that's so that's. Uh, so that's another thing that we need to, to talk about, and, and this yeah. can all come kind of under the umbrella of. Our, the review of the guidelines. We're going to have to. I mean, we, that's going to be a big project. So getting that wording straightened out right. so that you can right. have a fine for repeat offenders. Right. But I mean, one of the things, so let's let's bring this forward again next at the next meeting. Okay. And 
So we want to, at the next meeting, I want to add to the agenda a review of the, setting up the guidelines committee. So think about who wants to be on that. Like me, I know you would, Ben, and we'd love to have you. Uh, also, I'd like to, uh, along with this, I'd like to see the chairman review the uh, packets before they go out to the to go on to the agenda. Just to, and I think just as an assist to you, Joe, I've been wanting to do this for a while just mm -hmm. to make sure because when we get incomplete packets, we have to turn down the applicants. Yeah. Um, and we want to make sure, I think we all are frustrated with incomplete packets. One of my have, greatest thrills. Not having no more double-sided. <laughs> so, so that's what we need to talk about, how we want to see them. And I'll review them, and anybody else can review them on board that, that wants to do before they go on the agenda. So I Usually as they get, as they get the, agenda, the, um, the packets, they, they're sent out to you guys on those days. And if you guys find any mistakes, I've said that before, too. Well, it's hard to do that, you know, for the emails. You know, you get you send out the emails, and it's like there's a piece here and a piece there. Um, I, I think if we can get them in, they're supposed to be in two weeks before they go on the agenda, correct? Well, technically, yeah, but yeah. I, I accept them right up to a week before. Well, that may not be prudent to do because they come in, they're a mess. And it doesn't, you know, if they can't get in in a timely manner, then... Well, well, some we are and some aren't. We can't put, well, that's what we want to straighten out, I think. Yeah. But let's discuss that at the next, next at point. the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So those those items are going to come up. Um, anything else? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's general? a simple one. You can say, yeah. read the list of things. So right. um, you called out, where's my material list? I should have a material list, right? Right. right. Technically, so, it's, it's, it's well, listed. I mean, right. we got to check each other. In. It's listed in the... Look, you know what's going to be in the packet, and it's clear as day. <laughs> it is. So we need to tighten that up, and we like to help with that. So, uh, anything further? I just want to clarify in terms of 600 tombstone. If I heard correctly, a stop work stop order is going, to, is going to be issued on that project because the site is not like for like. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at the his his, his agenda I, or his application, but. Remember that was the one we had. We had like, oh, I'm trying to think, nine packets. And as I was fixing them, doing them, it's like, oh, that one doesn't need to go. But the the second time around, the, the was second first time application around, yeah, right. where the major work was approved with the life for life signing. So I looked at the house today, and it appears that the front siding is off completely, right? And mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, so it's been off for some time because they we approved them modified part yeah, of the front. Put a bay window in there. Mm -hmm. But their their part of their rationale was we're going to reuse all of that siding from the front and the back. Right, right. No, and it should have sufficient amount to be able to reside the entire structure. Yeah, it's never and works. Right now. And so, but they put a hardy board. Did they remove the hardy board? No, no, no it's on. About a third of about a third of the hardy board's not up okay, on the front. Okay, then I'm It's down low. All right. Joel will handle it. Like, yes. We got to let Joel do his job. He, yeah, I'm sure he will. If there's nothing else to come before the board, uh, I'd like to make a motion to close. Motion, motion to adjourn. close. Yes. Second. Okay. Aye. 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 Well, I mean, we're not all retired. Yeah, that's going to be it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm trying to get. It's like more than me. Okay. Well, that's the way to talk. 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 That's the well, that's what we're talking about. Uh, when did she, 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 she start? She started on the 26th of July. Oh, she's lost past the month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 July, August, August, that's what I was going to do. I was going to give her a month and I was going to go get her a shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what her, how busy she is or anything like that, but... Honestly, the worst thing you can do is... Have a good night? Oh, yeah. Well,